Show with Kevin McCullough. Welcome back to Times Square. Kevin McCullough, glad to have you with us. Uh, yet to come, uh, the new music spotlight, of course. Uh, every single week, if you if you miss the songs, if you if you wanted to hear them again, we've got the entire list cultivated up at uh, Apple Music and, of course, Spotify. So you can go check out uh, New Music Spotlight on either one of those at That Kevin Show, and you'll find it. My next two guests are uh, kind of kind of fun to have them on. This is the first time that uh, we've had uh, the uh, talents of these two particular uh, ladies join us, and I have a feeling we're going to have them on a few times in the future because they are the Happy Women podcast hosts. <laughs> And if you've ever wondered if there are still some happy women in the world, well, maybe tonight we'll uh, convince you that there are. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Katie Gorka and Jennifer Horn. Hello, ladies. Hello, Kevin. Thank you for having us. I, I please hey, don't. Hey, Kevin. Don't let the applause go to your head because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a ravenous crowd we have out here tonight. Um, we were going to do the Miserable Woman podcast, but we decided that was already taken. So uh, happy women it was. <laughs> well, you may not, you may remember it, um, but uh, the um, Federalist a number of years ago had the Problematic Women podcast. Right. <laughs> and that was uh, uh, Brie, oh, what was her name? Uh, and and Kelsey Bowler was the, the co host the co-hosts and they went back and forth and they would talk about being problematic in the culture. <laughs> but you know what? Happy women are problematic women in today's culture, because if you don't need the government to feed you and hold your hand and pay for your child support, then you must not exist, at least in the democratic uh, framework of the way things work. And Katie Gorka, you have uh, obviously been associated with public life for quite some time. You and your husband, the beloved Dr. G, have talked about national security issues. You've been part of this. But on this issue, on the issue of, of women and happiness and contentment and what conservatives bring to the mix, how badly misrepresented do you feel when you look at the legacy media? Wow. Well, I just don't see myself there for one thing. Um, it's and it's yeah, I mean, I think this is something that Jen and I have talked about for a long time. So we've, we've been friends for quite a while and we've been talking together for quite a while. And, you know, one of the things that we've always loved to do is we we've always highlighted the stories of women who are making their communities better. And we realize that that's a story that's just not being told. You hear the women griping, you see the women griping. I mean, some of those faces that you see are just frightening. Um, but that's not, those aren't the women we're seeing in our community. So we just thought those stories needed to be elevated. Yeah. Well, it's it's a great concept for a podcast. And friends, by the way, if you're watching or listening, it's available at the Salem Podcast Network. Actually, it's probably anywhere you can get podcasts. Uh, just search for the Happy Women podcast with uh, Jen Horn and Katie Gorka. Jen, let me ask you this. You've worked in media, I think, longer than me, and that's saying something for someone <laughs> of of our generation. Um, but you you grew I mean, your dad was a broadcast legend and you grew up at his at his ankles. So, I mean, the, from the very beginning. But in the media, why is it that women who are accomplished, successful, intelligent, but happen to be conservative, oftentimes get eliminated from the equation when it comes to contributorships at major cable outlets or um, op-ed pages or any of any number of other places that you can think of. You know, it's really interesting when you are someone that the left thinks that they own your demographic, right? If you're a person of color or if you're a woman, if the left thinks that you belong to them and you happen to speak out, well, then you're no longer welcome. I'm obviously a woman. That's how I identify anyway. I live in Los Angeles and I am a conservative and I always feel shunned. I feel like people look at you a little bit differently. You feel like maybe they think that you're being fed a line by your husband. I mean, remember it was Hillary Clinton who's supposed to be the ultimate in feminism who said people or women will vote for Donald Trump because that's what their husbands tell them to do. And I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. And so when Katie and I started talking about this podcast, we wanted to find a place that creates a, a room really for not just conservative women, but conservatives in general to talk about some of the things in culture that are great, you know, movies, plays, books, things that we really enjoy, things that are fun. We're going to do a whole podcast on comedy coming up. I mean, we've got all of these things that are really fun, but also kind of highlight people who are trying to make a change, who are pushing the narrative. I mean, so many people now are not just wanting to be fitting. They're not 
putting themselves in these little boxes that the left has def has defined for us. So I think more and more we're going to see change. I think there are more young people, again, more minorities, more women who are speaking out and who have who don't fit that liberal line anymore. Katie Gorka, does it surprise you in the uh, as we move closer and closer to the election of this year, does it surprise you at all that Donald Trump is doing better with women in general, but specifically suburban moms that have in the in the past sometimes created a bit of a problem for him. When you look at the culture around with the woke ideology in school, the the gender identity issues and the other things that that people really care about, does it surprise you that he's that he's doing um, better this go around? What what are moms trying to tell us, I guess, is the question I'm getting to. Yeah, I think they're trying to tell us that the left has gone way too far. Um, I think, first of all, by putting uh, children on the front line of their culture war. I personally, I think the whole move of pushing transgender ideology went way too far. We just this past weekend had a drag queen uh, brunch at one of our local public high schools, and and a lot of people turned out to protest it because they just felt a it's not it's just not an appropriate use of taxpayer dollars. And it's not appropriate for kids, and I think you're seeing more and more of that. And I tell you what, I think what's happening on the college campuses is also going to push a lot of people to Trump. I mean, I I learned I just heard that that Columbia has has canceled their graduation. So think about those families, and this is going to be left and right alike who invested so much for their child to go to this school and now they don't get that ultimate celebration of a graduation because these these campuses lost control of themselves i i mean i think people on the left have have i think they're crazy if they don't come over to our side i'll just say that yeah no well i think i think there's a lot of people that kind of scratch their head and agree with you and say i don't i don't, I don't get what i'm seeing but jen and we're going to take a break in a second um you know, it's interesting when you when you talk about women, there's a there's a specific kind of stereotype that the legacy media is you're supposed to talk about women in the context of. So you're not supposed to presume that they know how to do housework. You're not supposed to presume that they would do anything other than want to work, you know, their entire life and give themselves tirelessly to uh, something that is not related to children. And as I have watched the kind of uh, the weaving of this kind of mentality into the policies of the Biden administration and kind of their their stances on things. The last three and a half years, what really strikes me is that the left really, really hates children. They, they yeah. just they don't like them before they're born. They don't want them to be raised by the parents that God himself gave them. And they don't want uh, they they don't want them to even stay as God created them. They would like to persuade them to try other experimental weirdo things. Mm -hmm. And I think that the idea that a woman's just supposed to just go along with all of this and say, yeah, it, I think it violates the nature of who she, who she was designed to be. Of course, the left, they don't like children. They want to control children because controlled children, indoctrinated children will continue this leftist push in our country. Stick around for more of That Kevin next. That Kevin Show with Kevin McCullough.